All right, so carrying on from episode one, um, here we're going to be installing DarkRP, installing a map, installing DarkRP modification, and then adding some jobs. Well, I'll be adding one job, but you can replicate this multiple times and add as many jobs as you want. Go ham. So, um, first we're going to jump over to the mod manager and uh, we're going to install some essentials. So we need Counter-Strike Source for Dark RP. Um, we also need Dark RP um, for Dark RP. Even if you're um, planning to do Star RP, you're going to need Dark, dark RP. Um, and then on episode 3, we're going to be renaming Dark RP. Um, if you're not doing a Star Wars RP server, then you can just skip episode 3. Um, we're going to need Dark RP modification. I'm also going to install ULX, um, just in case I need it. And I think that's everything that we need to start. So I'm just going to try and boot the server. Um, first you'll need to come over to start a parameters actually, and you'll need to change this to Dark RP. It will be sandbox by default, um, but I was just testing something a second ago and already set it to Dark RP. So once you've set it to Dark RP, um, just click update startup parameters. Don't try and change the map yet. Um, come over and start the server up. And if we come over to the server details page, um, we should see the game mode is dark RP when it boots up. It will just take a second. All right, so it's up and we can see the game mode is dark RP. So dark RP is loading fine and that's looking good. We can also see that ULX is loaded by scrolling up here. This, this huge thing is ULX. Um, okay, so um, now what we want to do is we want to install a map. Um, so I'm going to be using two maps for this example. Uh, first one is going to be Dark RP's pretty common RP downtown um, version 4C. And I'm also going to be doing Venator just in case anybody uh, is wanting to use Venator. Same process for both of them. I just figured I'd do both of them. Um, so. First, I'm going to come into this folder here, um, and then I'm going to click on our Steam Workshop button, and I'm going to paste the um, workshop link for Venator. And you do the exact same thing for RP Downtown too. Um, I'm just going to give this a second to download. This will also extract the add-on too, um, so you don't need to add the add-on to your workshop collect the map to your workshop collection. Um, if you're also getting players to subscribe to your workshop collection, you obviously might still want to do that, and there's no problem with doing that, but this this is just a little bit more reliable. So we've downloaded Venator, and we can see that it's going to be here in this folder, um, but I'm also going to start the download for um, RP Downtown. So we've got both of these maps, but what we need is we need them like we've got these these default maps here, GM, fl um, GM Flatgrass and GM Construct. So I'm just going to jump into these folders um, and I'm going to move this BSP file here to the maps file, the maps folder. So here I'm just going to get rid of all this so that it, lo it looks like Gary's mod slash maps slash RP downtown version 4C. Click OK. Watch that move. And now I'm just going to jump back out of this folder. I'm going to delete it. We don't need that anymore. And I'm going to do the same thing for Venator. So go into the maps folder here. Now normally if you're installing um, an add-on, you wouldn't need to do this. But it's just because maps are a little bit weird. You need to you need to move them from the file. But if you were to like install a normal add-on um, in the add-ons folder, you wouldn't need to really mess with anything. You would just use the workshop downloader straight in your add-ons folder and it would uh, it would work. So I've moved that. I'm going to delete the folder here. And if I scroll down, I should see Venator and RP Downtown. So I'm going to switch the map over to RP Downtown. Um, update the start parameters simply because I already have RP Downtown on my, my game, I think, I hope. I'm going to restart the server, and then I am going to join. Then I'm going to show you guys some basics for jobs um, and some basic Dark RP configuration. So let me just click this join button. So while I'm loading in, I'm going to go into the file manager, 
and then come into Gary's mod and then add-ons and then dark RP modification. This is now this is where you'll configure dark RP. Um, so firstly, um, the dark RP config, I really strongly recommend you read through the disabled defaults and the settings um, in a bit of detail um, to start with. Um, there is one thing I'm going to point out with uh, the settings, which is something you'll want to um, do from the get-go, um, and that is this line right here, which is disallow client-side scripts. This you're going to want to set to true. This will stop people being able to run um, cheats easily on your server. Um, there are some other settings which I'll point out in the Star Wars RP video, which are more specific to Star Wars RP. But for now, I'm just going to save this because that's the only thing which I need to point out at the moment. Disable defaults is something we're going to go through in Star Wars RP episode 2, but I recommend just reading through that fully the first time you install Dark RP. Um, and in Dark RP custom things here, now this is where we're going to add our custom jobs. Um, you know, group chats, entities, weapons, um, would go in the shipments file here, categories uh, for the F4 menu where, you know, jobs go and entities and stuff go, and ammo and all that good stuff goes in that folder. So, you can see that I'm loaded in, the map looks all fine, the F4 menu opens, everything's looking great. So, I'm going to jump on over to this custom jobs file here. Um, just as a small note. These custom, these default jobs you see here, you disable them in that disable defaults file I mentioned earlier, if you want to disable them. So, um, I'm going to start by creating a job. So, let's navigate over to csite.io. This is a pretty cool site that will make it a lot easier for you guys. So, I'm just going to click on over here and then come to the job generator. Now this thing does it all for you pretty much. So there's two things that I will point out. That is the team ID and the command need to be unique for every job. You can't have two jobs with the same command or the same team ID, but you can have multiple jobs with the same name, the same model, the same category, obviously, same color. Pretty much everything can be the same apart from the command and the team ID. So I'm going to um, put my team ID, I'm going to put team underscore example. Generally, people will start their team with team underscore for the team ID. Um, you don't need to, but that's a pretty general thing. Um, I normally put the command as the same as the actual team ID without the team underscore bit, just to keep track of the things. And then for the name, I'm going to example team for the job, I mean for the player model. I'm just going to use their player model list here, and I'm going to use a default player model. You're, you're probably going to want to use um, custom player models, especially if you're using Star Wars, you're doing Star Wars RP. For the category, I'm going to put citizens because I know that's a category that exists. If um, you're putting something like new here, like especially for Star Wars RP, if you're putting like um, different types of jobs, um, you'll want to come over to this category generator, which they've got linked, um, and you'll want to generate the categories for your um, jobs. The same thing goes for printers, um, also weapons, um, if you're doing shipments. Um, you'll need to create the categories before you can actually use them uh, here, for example. But I know f I know the game includes the citizens category by default, so I'm going to include that. Um, for access, uh, I'm going to let everyone choose it. I'm gonna not require a vote, not spawn with a weapon, um, a weapon license. I'm gonna disallow that. For the color, I'm just gonna pick a nice bright Crident red, just how we like it. For the description, I'm gonna put example around because that's super exciting. Now for weapon, um, if you wanna give a job a weapon, um, for example, if you're using like B key cards or something like that. Um, you right click and then click copy to clipboard here. So I'm going to use the Fletcher gun. Actually, I will not because I don't think that's... I'm going to use the Manhattan gun. I lied. Um, just as an example here. Um, I'm going to put that here. You just right click it and then um, copy, with clip to copy to clipboard. And then for the team... Um, oh, sorry, for the change, I'm going to leave that. That's useful, obviously, if um, you've got like a police chief job. You might want people to have to join the actual team police um, before they can actually become the chief. 
Um, so the salary, uh, I'm going to put that as zero. Normally you would do that for Star Wars RP, for example. And then for the max, I'm just going to put zero because zero is unlimited. Um, there's obviously some other options here. Um, I'll point out the custom check. This one is specifically common. Um, this will um, this will allow you to restrict jobs to certain ULX groups or certain other jobs, um, a bit like this does here. But you can actually have multiple jobs here, um, where, whereas here you can only have one job, I think. Um, or you can just restrict it to certain Steam IDs. So this custom check is really common for VIP jobs. Um, you won't use this as much in Star Wars RP to restrict jobs. You'll use something, something like the whitelist for that. But this is quite common for VIP stuff or admin jobs and stuff like that. I'm going to leave that for now. Um, but I just wanted to point that out. And then here um, we've got this block of code. And I'm just going to copy it. And then come over to our server details. Oh, sorry, our file editor. And we're in our jobs.lua file here. I'm just going to paste this right here. Um, you can get rid of this bit up here if you want to. Um, but I'm just going to leave it for now. Uh, and I'm going to save. And then I'm going to restart the server. I don't think I actually need to. Oh, yeah, I do. I do. Um, and then when our server restarts, hopefully we'll have our custom job with our Barney player model. And uh, it should spawn us with the Fletcher gun, I think. If I actually did that, I don't know if I forgot to do that. I did, oh, sorry, the Manhack Welder. How could I forget? All right, let's launch the game. When we get in, um, I'm going to join the job, assuming that it's there. Um, and then wrap this episode up. The next episode is going to be the Star Wars RP focused episode. So if you're just making a dark RP server, you can ignore the next episode. Um, here's our example team. So it worked. I'm going to become this job. And then I've got the Manhat gun. So we know that that worked, which is all cool. Um, so, yep, yeah, like I said, the next episode, um, we're going to be focusing on Star Wars RP renaming. Um, some dark RP modification changes which are like specific to Star Wars RP and then I'm also going to be um, going through the whitelist um, too. So that's pretty useful for Star Wars RP. So thanks for watching this video and um, have a nice day.